This is an example of a Hess's Law type problem. You are given enthalpy change information for a variety of processes and asked to calculate the delta H for a reaction overall. When doing Hess's Law, a little trick that I find to be helpful, we know from Hess's Law that the sum of the delta H for each step if we sum up all the delta H's for each step, we will get the change of enthalpy of the overall reaction. So we know that all of these steps will add up to ultimately giving us our overall reaction. So down, give myself a little bit of room, and I know that I'm going to add up each of these steps. When I add up each of these steps, I should get my overall reaction, which is B plus D yielding E plus 2C. I'm going to draw a little line over here because everything to the right of this line is going to be my delta H information, which is kilojoules per mole. So what Hess's law says, if I figure out the delta H for each step, then I can add them up to get the overall delta H. And we may have to manipulate and change the delta H for each reaction. Let's remember two important points. The delta H depends on the moles present. So what that means is I have to look closely at the stoichiometric coefficients. If the coefficients need to be changed, say they need to be multiplied by 2 or multiplied by a half, we must do the same for the delta H. And this should make sense because if reacting two moles would give you 50 kilojoules, then if I reacted four moles, I'd get twice as much because I'm reacting twice as many moles and therefore I get 100 joules. The second thing to remember is the sine of delta H reverses when the reaction is reversed. So those are two important points to remember. So when attacking a Hess's Law problem, let's think things through a little bit. I know I want everything to add up to B plus D yields E plus 2C. So I look through the processes that I have, and I see I'm going to start at the left-hand side, a process that contains B. Well, I see two of them that contain B. I really don't know which one to use right now, so I'm going to skip that. Let's look at D and E. D also has two possibilities, and I don't know which one, so I'm going to move on. E. There's only one process that contains E, and that's the last one. E plus A yields 2D. The problem is, is that the E needs to be on the product side, and in our process that we're given, it's on the reactant side. It's the right amount of moles, just the wrong location. So I'm going to reverse this. 2D yields E plus A. Now, if I reverse this, I don't do anything to the amount of delta H. I just reverse the sign from positive 350 to negative 350. So now I've accounted for my E. I have it there. Let's look at C. Only process 2 has C in it. It has 2 moles of it, just like I want, and it's on the react uh, product side, just like I want. So I'm going to write that reaction for process 2 exactly as I see it, and if I don't change it, I don't change the delta H. So now I've accounted for my 2C. I know if I would add these up, I'd get 2C and E. I also know over here I have B and D. But look what I have up here, an A. There should be no A anywhere in my final. And how do you get rid of a substance? Well, in chemistry, it's a little bit like math equations. If it shows up on both sides, it can be canceled out. So what I want to do is find a way to cancel out this one mole of A. And so I have to have one mole of A on my reactant side. If I look at process 1, I see the reactant of A, but it's only a half a mole. So I need to multiply it by 2. 
And when I multiply a half a mole of A by 2, I get 1 mole of A. Well, I can't just stop there. If I multiply that by 2, I have to multiply every substance by 2. So I don't end up with 1 mole of B, I end up with 2. And I have to take the delta H and multiply it by 2 as well. So now let's work through adding up, see if everything adds up correctly. My A's would cancel out. I have 2B on the product side and 3B on the reactant. So this would cancel out and I'd only be left with 1B. I have a D over on my product side and two D's on my reactant side. So what I would do is end up with just the one after they crossed out. So that would give me 1D 1B on the react, B plus D yields B plus 2C. So when I add up the delta H, the delta H would be 300 plus negative 125 plus negative 350, and I get negative 175 kilojoules as my final for the overall. Hess's law are, is kind of like putting together pieces of a puzzle. You've got to flip, you've got to return, you have to rearrange, and you may have to change coefficients in order to make everything cancel out appropriately.